Good morning, YouTube. My name is Karel Saking, StanStrength.com. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to balance boxing, MMA, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with power building. But before we get into that topic, if you would like to work with me as a coach, then the link in the description is below. Or if you'd just like to support the channel, then there is an option for apparel as well. So let's talk about why there is why this is even a question. If you have two different forms of training that you like to do, why do you need to think to yourself, okay? I want to do this and I want to do this, but they're not really like, but how do I balance them? Why not just do them? So let's talk about the issues that people run into, right? The first one is the interference effect. This is a commonly um, known to be the observation that certain capacities when trained concurrently, you just get less of each. That's why power building gets a bad rap because many people think that if you train bodybuilding and powerlifting at the same time, you're just going to get a watered down version of both. However, because these goals are much more similar than most people give credit, what ends up happening is that if you are a natural lifter, you kind of have to train like one. So when it comes to something like boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, or anything of that nature, it's a bit different. The needs and specificity and the capabilities needed for combat sports is very different than the adaptations and training you'll need to do for strength training or size training. So that's why the need to balance these things, it comes into question. Now, here is where it kind of gets kind of interesting, right? Unless you're an advanced competitor, or even unless you're just a competitor in general, then yes, you will, like if you are a competitor, then yes, the interference effect is something you, would, you need to take into consideration. If you're not, then you kind of don't. Now, before I get all the people in the chat saying like, oh, if you're gonna be the best in something, you need to do a focus on it. It's like, yeah, you do. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that if you have very little intention to actually move into the sport, whether it be amateur competitions or you know professionally getting into it, then you don't need to change your life around it just so you can get a little bit better at something that's not even that much of a priority. So the average person, and this is another thing. And the average person, they can do general strength training. They can do hypertrophy training, cardiovascular training. And then, of course, the skill work needed for whatever sport they want to do concurrently and not really notice the interference effect that much. And here's why. You're not going to get absurdly huge to the point where you're now unable to punch properly. You're not going to be un absurdly like there's no weakness in strength training. Now, you can choose better exercises as they pertain to your needs and your sport, but at the same time, getting stronger is not a bad thing, regardless of what sport you choose to follow. And then of course, cardiovascular conditioning. You're not going to be the best in any of these things, but you're going to be very well-rounded. Now, the thing that I feel like has influenced us the most is just how much people want to be optimal. People just want to be optimal. They want to have the most science-based training so they're trying to look for the science, like hard sciences, to provide the answer to their questions. Well, really, when it comes down to questions like this, how do I balance multiple things in my life? It's more of a uh, philosophical question in a sense, because it's really what matters to you. And then, of course, the arguments you make to justify your own belief. So when it comes to how to balance boxing and strength training, the next part is just how important is it? Are you competitive? Are you, are you competitive? Are you planning to actually be a part of that sport or are you doing it for fun? I'm just doing it for fun. So when it comes down to the interference effect, you could argue that because I do something high impact like boxing for fun or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for fun, that it's going to get in the way of my strength training. And the reason why I don't think it does or really matters that much is because, well, for one, I'm also trying to lose weight right now. Like, I'm not really focused entirely on just, you know, getting new PRs in the gym at the current moment. So, you know, oftentimes people like to have a way of training that lasts the entire lifetime. The way I would much rather have it is where you have like a training philosophy that you can follow um, where different things are appropriate at different times. So that is more important. Next is when it comes to issues we face, right? It's recovery is going to be a big one. If you are trying to do multiple things, try to do multiple sports, you're going to find that you're going to be very sore from doing all of them. Um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, when I first started getting into it, has made me more sore than weightlifting has in quite a while. So we only have one body. We only have one body. We can only like we have one source of recovery and then that's it. 
Now, that is why, as I mentioned earlier, priorities are going to be the biggest thing. If you know what your priorities are, you kind of have to accept the pros and cons that comes with it. If your priority is, you know, power building, you're not going to get as good as you could be if you focused entirely on boxing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, or MMA. Now, with that being said, if those things are for fun, it doesn't really make sense for you to remove your priorities or move your priorities around just to cater to something that's not even that important in the grand scheme of things. So that's why for me, I still lift weights four days a week. I'm not going to cut down on my strength training just for boxing and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because it's not that big of a priority for me right now. When it comes to you, it might be entirely different. So let's kind of go into how, I, how we go about it. If you are going more like the fun route, the route that I'm going down, then yeah, don't move, don't move around your um, training schedule. Add it in at the end of your sessions if you can. Or let's say you're going to an actual class, try to keep your sessions apart by at least six hours. So six hours after the class if you go in the morning or six hours before the class if you go in the evening, if possible. Um, those are going to be good things that you can do. Other things you can do is just like have them on separate days. So if, for example, you are doing a four day split, right? That gives you three days. At least one of them should be a full recovery day where you just like go for a walk or something like that. The other two days, that can be the days where you actually put the boxing on or you can have like one day where it's only boxing and then one day where it's weights and boxing. And that's kind of a good way to um, mix things up and like bring them all together so that way you're not just totally burning yourself out. I found that to be very sustainable and very doable. And then... That's another reason why I really advocate for three to four time per week training because it allows you to do more than just weights. It allows you to train other capacities. So I really advocate for that. Now, let's say you are trying to be a bit more serious about it, whether you're trying to get into some amateur competitions or you are already already a competitor, then three days is probably the best option for you. Reason being is that when it comes to natural training for size, strength, when it comes to the weight room, I do think three to four days a week is the Goldilocks zone. I think that's the golden standard. I think that's where you should be. Now, here, if you are doing three days a week for your weight training, you can do two to three days a week for your combat sport. The next thing I would really recommend that you do for both your combat sport and your weight training is to follow something like a heavy light medium setup. So you have a heavy light medium in the weight room and you have a heavy light medium for your sport. So me, I'm more so a boxer. So on one day, like let's say on the light day, it'll be more just like some light partner drills, some uh, reflex drills, some shadow boxing, stuff of that nature, right? And then on other days, it's going to be like maybe some high, higher impact stuff. So maybe some bag work or something of that nature. And then on the heavy day, so like that would have been the moderate day or medium day. And the heavy day would something be like heavy hard sparring or something of that nature or like drill sparring or something of that nature, right? And then of course the weights, I'm not going to go into heavy light medium for this video, but it, it's exactly what it sounds like. You have a day where you go heavy, a day where you go light, and a day you go more moderate. So if you are trying to, if you're really afraid of getting bigger and buffer for your sport, then you can try going a bit more conjugate-esque with it. So your heavy day is going to be max effort day. Your light day is going to be speed work, maybe with some accommodating resistance. And then on your medium day, it's going to be like some... If you're really afraid of like putting on muscle, then just do like some calisthenics and machine work. Otherwise, you can do like more bodybuilding stuff. So higher reps, dumbbell work, stuff of that nature, right? So that's how you would train if you are a bit more serious about it. Another thing that I would do is like if you are approaching a competition, so let's say it's like you're getting closer to the night of your fight, then you can drop down the weights and start doing other things that are more relevant to your sport. So more technique drilling, more um cardiovascular training to help um get you fight ready and then on that you might want to drop your weights down to once or twice a week i personally would do twice a week still just so that way you can still maintain like uh, your strength and like your physical capabilities but i do understand why you would want to go down to one but i don't think that's entirely necessary in my opinion now this is an opinion of someone who is not by any means a professional strength and conditioning coach but me personally, I just wouldn't want to um, just be completely out of touch with 
the weights with strength training with power of training so some stuff of that nature right so i'd still want to be doing like some moderately heavy power cleans i would still want to be doing some trap bar deadlifts and some circuit training right just to keep my muscles active just to keep that strength there and available to me so that way when i do fight or something of that nature it's there right so Three to four weeks out, do just maintenance work rather than going like if you do the two days a week split, then it'll be like an intensity day and a volume day as outlined by Alpha Destiny. And then once you're much closer to fight, just switch it down to um, some maintenance work when you go to the gym. Some low volume, moderate intensity stuff, calisthenics, some light power cleans and some light dynamic movements just once or twice a week. Right. And that's it. But that isn't how you should be training the entire time. I had a comment in the comment section and I appreciate your enthusiasm, I appreciate your input, but I just don't agree with that. Oftentimes when you give a general answer, it just leaves out too much in, uh, detail, which is why I made this video. Um, this was just a uh, this video was inspired by a comment left on my previous um, DKU and uh, Bradley Scott recap video. And when it comes to lifting advice, Context is super important, which is why I try to provide as much context as possible to the answers that I give. So what you do when it comes to balancing boxing, MMA, um, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, it all comes down to how much of a priority is it to you? Like, this is a personal question. And then the next one is like, are you a competitor? Do you actually compete in the sport? Because that will determine like the needs of the answer as well. And then finally, like how close are you to that competition? Those are the three things. Like those are three things that I can just type out, which is why I didn't want to just answer it in a comment and why I wanted to make this video. So if you have any other questions about this topic, just let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Carlson King, StanceTrain.com, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.